Get this all rolling. All right, three, two, one. Welcome, 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 everybody, to the 73rd episode of the Hashtag Investors Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bauer. And first and foremost, if you're getting value out of this podcast, if you've learned anything, please like and subscribe to the podcast. I'm trying to spread this word. You know, we've had a really, really good lineup of guests on the show, and I think that uh, I've got feedback from several of the listeners that they've, they've really got a lot out of it. So if that's you, please do me a favor. Help me spread the word by liking and subscribing to this podcast and sharing it across your platform because uh, that helps me out. With that being said, on the 73rd episode, we have Brandon Simmons with us today out of Phoenix, Arizona. Brandon, how you doing, man? I'm great, man. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, too. Appreciate that. You know, I'm excited for this call. Uh, I really am. And so why don't we lead this off? Why don't you give the listeners a little bit more about your background, what you're focused on now, and we'll go from there. Cool. Um, well, um, I started wholesaling back in 20, 2010. And um, basically, for like the last four and a half years, I was working with Sean Terry with Flip to Freedom. Um, I was running the whole Phoenix uh, real estate division for him. Um, I don't think Sean Terry signed a contract in the last four or five years. So I think uh, handled all the dispositions and then moved into a role where I was the uh, COO of the company and uh, basically helped with hiring, training, um, even helped on a few information products and stuff. So now I run my own real estate business in Phoenix, Arizona. I partner up with a group called GBG Capital out in Texas, and we're wholesaling in, in Texas, Florida, and Atlanta area right now. And I also do coaching. Uh, what's one of my favorite loves is giving back and teaching. And I do uh, group coaching right now and some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but I, I'm teaching a lot of beginners. I'm helping some other uh you know, I've been helping several other people kind of scale their business to having a, you know, 100K plus wholesale business every year. So it's a lot of fun. Now, um, and I'm guessing this is 100K a month wholesale business, right? Not a year or no, starting with a year. I, well, I mean, yeah, some people, they want to be making 100K a year. That, that would be phenomenal for them. A lot of my beginners. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the other ones, they're just scaling, um, you know, scaling up. So Definitely. Well, let's, I mean, let's go all the way to the very beginning. So when you started wholesaling, you know, when you first got into the market, did you link up with Sean right away or was this, you know, how, how did that get started? Were you an agent? How did that start? No, I, I'm not a real estate agent. Um, so I did find out about the Flip to Freedom podcast. Um, I signed up for Sean Terry's Flip to Freedom Academy. I was the 37th member of the Academy, I think it was. I used to meet up with Sean at Panera Bread and someplace like that before everyone knew who he was yet, I guess. He was still kind of getting going in the, in the podcasting. That's when our podcast was just starting. And I think he would do a lot of his podcasts on his phone in the car, driving back and forth and stuff like that. You can hear the air conditioning blowing and stuff. Um, and so I think I was like on uh, – he talked about – this, this kid that was inconsistent in his marketing would get deals and not get deals and stuff like that. I was kind of like that kid he was talking about, I think it was like in the 17th episode of his podcast. So I've known Sean for a while, um, but I feel very grateful that he's been one of my mentors. Um, we're still great friends. We're partners in the coaching business. Um, and I've had just in the last year, we probably have had over 70 plus coaching students. So and that's definitely a way to, to, to give back. And we're going to get into that later here in the call. Um, what did you do before you got into real estate, before you found Sean, before you did any of that? I read this book. I read a couple books. One of them was The Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So get I closer to the mic. Sorry. I, one of them was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. Oh, you know what? Let me grab my, uh, my mic over here real quick. I forgot that. So. so sorry. I forgot to plug that in, dude. No worries, I just... Nothing a little edit can't help, right? <laughs> all right, let me see if I can plug this in right. Is that, is that better at all? I think so. Yeah, I think so. No, how about now? Even better, way better. Awesome, awesome. okay, so sorry. So um, basically what happened was um, I my, did my very first wholesale deal in 2010. And I did a JV split with Sean Terry. That was my very first deal. 
Um, and I, I remember writing a goal on an index card saying I wanted to make $5,000 on a wholesale deal <laughs> in 30 days or less. And before that, what I was doing, I was working at Wells Fargo. I was working like six days a week, 60 hours doing mortgages. So I was always interested in real estate. I read a couple books that talked about how important real estate it was, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad was one of the ones that kind of triggered me on that. And then Think and Grow Rich, yep. was one of my other favorite books. Um, and it was, I got hooked. My very first deal, I got hooked. And um, everyone, I think, remembers their first deal. But mine was, I think, just absurd, weird. Because when we closed on the deal, the, the title company was supposed to wait to release all the funds that the, the seller needed a few extra days to move. And so it turns out we had to go and move a single mom in one day. I had to take the day off of work. We had to move a bunch of animals. And one of the animals was a desert tortoise. We had to rehome with the Phoenix Zoo. So it was one to remember. Yeah, that that my my first deal was not that exciting at all. Um, not even close to that exciting, actually. Uh, so that's certainly one way to remember that. Um, man, five thousand dollars. This is two thousand ten. You want to make five grand on a wholesale yeah. deal? I made fifty five hundred the day after the goal was set, like on the thirty first day. You know what's funny about that? I wonder if that's a, a standard thing because actually, just as a reminder. I keep the very first check and dollar I ever made and it just happens to be for $5,400. Oh, <laughs> crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. And so it's always, you know, I, I hear that all the time where people make like five grand on their first deal. I, th I don't know if that's just a standard, you know, mm -hmm. it was, it was mind blowing at the time. It was, it was one of those like, Oh my gosh, this actually worked. I can't believe it. Right. Right. Yeah. So that, that happened. Then what? I mean, how, you know, what, what catapulted you from there? Man, I, I struggled. I, I'm going to be honest. I struck, I went up and down. Um, I did marketing. I had inconsistencies. Um, and I, in fact, I was, I, I, ha I would have deals and not have deals and go like that for a couple months. And I was still working for um, another mortgage company. I got laid off from Wells Fargo. I was working for a mortgage company. Sean Terry called me and said he wanted me to come work for him. And, and I called the golden handcuffs and said, no, no, I, I have a great job. You know, I got great benefits. I'm doing really good. I'm making good money. And I was thinking it over. I was talking to my wife. I was talking to my brother, who's like one of my best friends. And my brother said, if you don't take that job, I'm going to kick you in the butt. Like this, <laughs> is you know, to do real estate. And I went to the um, company I was working at at the time and I told them I was thinking about taking this position. They said, well, if it doesn't work out, you always have a job here. So don't worry about it. So I went and I, I basically crushed it. Like I, I tripled my income the first year. So it was, it was amazing. I you know, I was making like anywhere between 70, 80,000. And then it was, you know, making 180,000 plus my first year right out of the gate. So, yeah. And that, and so, I mean, when that was still 2010, uh, that, no, that was uh, about five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, you know, I mean, that was around the same time, 2013 is when I got after the crash. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, after the, right. When everything was really starting to yeah heat up, up. you can make money, you can sell stuff. And knowing what I know now, if I knew this, when, it, when the crash happened, I would not be on, you know, I would be in a whole different level, but yeah. Right. Maybe both. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So that brings us basically to now, what does the operation look like now? You know, you mentioned the coaching and do you have right. a big team? Do you have a lot of people on the phone? Are you, you know, no, what all right. well, I'm pretty small, pretty small operations. So um, on the wholesale side, um, I, I'm, I'm partnered with a company out of Dallas and we have sales teams in Dallas, Atlanta and Florida. And so they kind of handle all the acquisitions, the lead management. I help a lot with training, with dispositions. I work closely with the dispositions manager, um, trying to sell deals, trying to build buyers lists. Um, and I do deals here in Phoenix. A lot of my business right now in Phoenix comes from joint venturing with other wholesalers. Yep. Yep. Um, that, and that's the thing I did when I was working with Sean too, is I, um, we, we would hold regular meetups 
we would have a lot of people come out to the meetups and we did, you know, I was doing two to four JV deals every single month on, on top of all the other deals we were selling. So, and one of the things I really loved too was um, when I first came on, there was not a lot of people doing seller financing or Sh Sean sales guys weren't doing any seller financing. And then I love wraps and lease options and stuff like that. So we started doing a lot more uh, seller carrybacks, wraps. That's how I got all my rentals, all basically were seller carrybacks. So yeah. it's a beautiful thing, man. I tell you what, I just uh, recently have really started to dive into that with Eddie Speed. Uh, oh, yeah. and, and then, okay. Then really spending a lot of time on that, actually. And it's mm -hmm. pretty cool stuff. Um, what if, for the listeners out there, I mean, I, I and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you were working with Sean, you did a lot of the disposition for him. Right. And the disposition means for those listeners out there that don't know what that is, that's selling of the property. That's when you sell yeah. the properties. You have acquisitions and dispositions. Dispositions right. when you sell it. Talk about the importance of that for the listeners right now, because I think that, you know, you're talking about JV deals, you're talking about other deals that you're selling. None of that can happen without a good disposition. Yeah, and um, I did acquisitions as well. I trained a lot of our acquisitions guys. Um, we had phenomenal acquisitions guys. I mean, some of the guys just, we had one sales guy that was responsible for a million dollars a year, every single year, Rafael Cortez. Yep. He's on his own now too. Um, but what was amazing is we would collaborate because I basically was the guy that would tell them whether our deal would sell or not. And I, I knew the buyers and the buyers list so well that I could tell what area, what price point was hitting and you got to know your comps. And so one of the things that Sean was really good at was every week we did a Monday meeting, a mon Monday morning meeting and we went over every new deal. We comped it out and we figured it out. And sometimes I would get pushed, like we should, we got to push the price up. But one of the strategies I implemented in dispositions was creating a VIP text message list. So we get early alerts out to our VIP buyers that already bought stuff from us. And then I would have a, basically like a 30 minute feeding frenzy open house. And that would create, we had, we had over a hundred people show up at one of our houses in Scottsdale one time. Wow. It was nuts, but we sold three other, we sold three properties that day. So, I mean, you know, Talk to the listeners that are, are that maybe maybe they're on their own, right? And they're trying to get started. Would you say that it's very important to have somebody dedicated to the disposition side of things? Or so in whenever I whenever I coach my students, I my hiring order basically is leads manager first, because I feel like that it's a, you can kind of train someone to kind of take the calls and kind of gauge some motivation and schedule appointments for you. And then the acquisitions, you're still doing acquisitions and that's more of a thousand dollar, 500, a thousand dollar an hour job compared to a 10 or $15 an hour job. And then the dispositions is just as important as acquisitions, but usually a disposition person can handle more deals, like say 10 deals in, in a month, 12 deals in a month where an acquisition person, person is trying to lock up about three to four or five deals a month. Um, and they're going on 20 appointments a week, 15, 20 appointments a week. So my order of hiring is leads manager, acquisition, then disposition. Okay. And I think that's, that's right. Cause a disposition won't have anything to do if there's no properties to sell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the reality of it. Mm -hmm. And do you find that, um, you know, kind of going back to the, to the buyer's list side of things, how difficult is it to find that? or to build that for in any, in any market that you're at, you know, cause I feel like I wanted to push on that subject. When I first met you, that's what you were doing for Sean or with Sean. It was all dispositions. It was like, you know, that is the best way to build that list is to build relationships with people, look at the buyers, have relationships with them, you know, have a short list of people first and then have another text blast maybe or email blast that you can push out to talk about that. So when I first started, all we had was an email. Um, we, the, the SMS and text messaging um, side of things was kind of new. A lot of people weren't using that type of uh, technology yet. I mean, I know it's, everything moves so fast now. Yeah. I mean, it sounds so weird to think that we weren't text, sending mass text messaging five years ago or so. But 
we weren't really doing that. And so I started building that up using keyword, you know, people could just type in a keyword to a phone number and then they would automatically be opted in. Um, that text message list, to give you an idea, a good response rate on email list is 10%. So if you have 30,000 people, which is a huge list on an email list, if you have a 10% open rate, that means 3,000 people open up your email. So on a text message list, if I have 3,000 people on my text message list, the open rate is over 94% in the first four minutes. So the text message really drove a lot of business and people that aren't using text message and SMS marketing to blast out your property, I think you're, um, you're losing some money probably. I couldn't agree with you more. It's a new thing we've really started to push out. Yeah. Um, and on the buyers list, one of the things, and I share this with people and I talk to this about my coaching suits, a lot of people don't, a lot of gurus don't talk about the buyers list because that's, they want you to bring them the buyers. Right. So, you know, like if you're, if you're building a buyers list, they don't want, or if you have a huge buyers list, you want all the new beginners to bring you deals, which is awesome. And they will. Um, and because you have a responsive buyers list, but there's really four types of buyers on your buyers list. The one is the cash fix and flip buyer. You know, you can get cash transactions from the MLS or from your title company or looking them up through some software that says, okay, this is a cash transaction. This is a fix and flip buyer. The second one is a landlord buyer. Um, and in Maricopa County, what's amazing is a lot of counties and municipalities now, they make you register your rental properties. Right. So in Maricopa County, I found out I can go and get over 90,000 landlords with phone numbers from the county. It cost me about 500 bucks or so, but I can go and get that whole list of registered landlords. So now my buyer's list is over 90,000 <laughs> if I want. You know, I don't, I don't blast all that. I try to figure out, you know, zip codes and areas and stuff like that. Um, then the third one is the people that control 95% of all real estate transactions, which is realtors. Huge. Once you add realtors to your list, they go out. Those realtors have clients that are fixed and flippers. They have clients that are um, uh, landlords as well. And then the fourth person on your buyers list that a lot of people don't think about is other wholesalers, other investors. Like if I don't have a buyer, I leverage you and say, Hey, do you have a buyer for this? Um, in our, in our mastermind that we have here in Phoenix, the go-giver mastermind, a lot of us have done business with each other by just helping each other sell deals. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't look at it as competition or anything like that. Well, and you know, Right now, I have a property that was sold. It's no longer sold. Um, so might utilize you and everybody tomorrow at the Go-Giver Mastermind, which we're going to talk about the Go-Giver Mastermind uh, still on this call, but to, to, to move this property, because I know somebody will buy it, right? Yeah. Somebody will get it. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember, I think we partnered up on a, was it a 12 unit? Uh, 10 unit. 10 unit. Yeah. 10, 10 unit uh, complex. Yep. And it was another Go-Giver that had a buyer for that. So, yeah, right. I mean, you know, that's the best thing. I think it's important for all the listeners out there. I know that you have the same mindset, but there is no competition. There's just collaboration, right? There's plenty to go around. Everybody can make a ton of money as long as we all just, you know, don't be greedy. Right. Yeah. So, um, well, I, that's a, you know, I guess a good segue. Uh, and I appreciate you sharing that kind of about your business and, you know, what you've done to build the buyer's list and the importance of doing that. Now let's take a shift to the Go-Giver Mastermind because I want to shout out on that. You've done a very good job of putting together some, a good solid group of people here in Phoenix that are all collaborating together. We meet, what, once a month? Is that what it, yeah, once yeah, a month. Yeah, we meet, we meet every month. Um, top secret location. <laughs> yeah. Kids, um, kids like to play at this place. <laughs> yeah, it's basically what it is too. It's a, it's an invite only because um, we want people to have the same mindset. Yeah. Um, we don't want, I, I don't charge for it. Now, I'm not saying that that will kind of be the same, but the key is trying to figure out who who's doing deals in the market, who's having success, and who's willing to share their 
their things that are working and the things that they need help with, being vulnerable and asking for help. And what's amazing is the people with the mentality, uh, willingness to help others, their business grows too, almost always. I, I, I think every single person in our group has done business with someone else in our group. Yep. So. Yep, I can think of, I think three or four people have done business with in there. Great mastermind though. I mean, a great, just great group of people. It's a lot of fun too, right? Everybody's in there yeah. having a good time. I think I've had several of the people on this podcast, um, you know, and continue to do so. So hats off to you for that. Well, but you know, it's, uh, I, I just turn it right back. I, I am, all I do is organize. Yeah. Everyone else presents, everyone else shares. I just wanted to get a couple of the people that I liked that I felt like were really givers you know, and not, not takers and charging for everything. I really wanted to have the right mindset, the right people in there. And I think that's what made the difference for a lot of people. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Brandon, I mean, where do you see your business going from here? You know, what are your goals? What are, what's, you know, you, 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 you post out on social media, you talk about how, you know, you got to shoot for the big stuff, think big, dream big, right? Go after the big stuff. What's the big stuff for you? Um, I love doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going to go on a bigger scale. Yeah. I love doing wholesaling. I love training new people doing it. Um, I love seeing growth. I love coaching. Um, I, I see information products coming very soon, working on some stuff, working on, on how to build buyers lists and, and how to sell properties in 30 minutes for the most money possible. Um, it's stuff that I already know. It's it's not. It's just putting it into an information way, but but it's a way way to share it. But also, I want to make sure that people can uh, benefit from it. I don't want junk out there. You know, I want high quality, good stuff. And I I also love to be able to have an idea where there's some live events, like people that are in our mastermind. They're already doing events and they're making a killing and they're doing awesome. But I would love to have a collaboration where maybe we'll have some massive live event that just blows the roof off of everything else out there that's, that's available to people. So, well, I'm excited to talk about that. Cause I'd love to partake in that with you. And I think that maybe tomorrow we'll have that conversation. Yeah. I don't know. One last uh, kind of topic I want to go over and I probably should have done this earlier in the call. And that is what, what have been some big hiccups and, you know, problems that you've had in this journey that you've had so far in building your business? So on the wholesale, on the wholesaling side of the business. So I basically have a couple of different businesses. I have the wholesaling business and then I have my coaching business, right? On the wholesaling business, it's inconsistent on marketing. I've learned my lesson. Uh, the key is to have leads coming in all the time and, and it's better to have more leads than less leads. And I would rather be in a position where I have to hire some help to help follow up on leads than not have anything coming in. So that, and, and I had a, luckily I learned through, um, I got to see firsthand on a million dollar business with Sean's business, all the different types of marketing and figuring out what works. I'm analytical, I'm very analytical. So I like to see, you know, the, the best return on your investment and focusing on those. And, and on my coaching students, I try to get them to do that. One of my biggest things I preach is be laser focused on a couple of different marketing uh, strategies and just, and be consistent. Once you turn the light switch on, don't turn it off. Yep. And then on the coaching side, believe it or not, like the biggest thing I had to learn is psychology. Um, there's great people with great intent that for some reason they get in their way and they don't take action. And I, I have, I am probably the worst as you know, Sean talked about on his podcast. I was a guy that was inconsistent and had, um, I would have analysis paralysis all the time. I would go to Sean and talk about different things and said, just go do it, just do it. So I kind of got over that. So if anything, I would just try to encourage people to take action. You have enough information a lot of times right now just take action on it. The people, some of my most, most successful students, they, they don't know all the steps in, in the process. They just know they need to do this and they did it. Like go driving for a dollar for a couple hours a day or a cold call for a couple hours a day or send out RVM blasts or send out postcards or whatever it is and they just go full blast, like pedal to metal. 
Yeah, I think those are two very important, you know, issues and problems that can come up for people for not being consistent in marketing and not taking action, right? Because it's very easy to get stuck between your own two ears and in your own head and not take that action, right? I mean, we all, everybody else. Yeah. Have been built. But I think that's also one of the reasons why I love um, having friends in the business so I can pick up the phone and call and ask a question. Hey, I'm stuck or I'm trying to figure this out. Can you help me? And that's where wherever market you're in, whether there's a mastermind there or not, I think you need to create a mastermind and be part of a mastermind. You know, I think it does help. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I absolutely agree. And, you know, like I said, good group of people here in Phoenix, you've been able to put together a lot of friends, you know, a lot of people that are doing stuff, playing golf, going out on the weekends, et cetera. Right. So yeah, it's been very cool. Well, uh, Brandon, for sake of time, man, are you ready for a lightning round? Let's roll. All right, man, let's do it. So what, if you were to give our listeners a hashtag invest this tip, what would that tip be? Um, you can double your buyers list by two things, adding, uh, realtors to your buyers list and adding registered landlords in your community. Boom. Huge tip. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's, that's probably one of the biggest tips that I've got on the podcast because a lot of people don't, don't know how to do that. Right. So very <laughs> simple. Um, what has been a very impactful book for you? What book is it and how has the impact been? <laughs> so this has probably been one of the most impactful books because it talks about um, being a person of value, giving value first. Don't always be a taker. Figure out how you can give value to someone, whether it's a client, a seller, a, you know, whatever it is, be a value, be a person of value first. But it also talks about reciprocity. It's okay to receive too. It's okay to get paid for your value. It's just the key is to give more, more in value than you receive in payment. And then the other one, one of my other favorite books right now is by Ari Mizell. It's called The Replacement Founder. Um, and he t- basically, that's really written for business owners, how to optimize and automate your business and then outsource things. So you're not stuck working 60 hours a week, you know, and, and getting other people to do the work for you. Well, I need to read that book, The Replacement Founder, he says. Yeah. Yes, the replacement founder. I'll send you a copy. Okay, sounds good. That's a deal. What about advice? So the next question is, who's giving you the best advice out there and what has that advice been? Um, one of my really good friends, um, it's uh, Dave Gummison here in, in the local market. He's been interviewed on bigger, bigger Pockets. No one knows who he is. And he likes to keep it that way. He flies under the radar, but he's probably one of my best friends, especially in the business and has been, he was my realtor when I moved here. He helped me buy my house. He was the first person I knew in Arizona. Um, But he's done every type of real estate investments. And what I love is he's literally like the millionaire next door. He's not flashy. He's all about assets, paying for everything. Yeah. Imagine, imagine a guy telling you, save your money, pay, pay your bills months in advance, you know, don't try to avoid any, you know, major debts and stuff. He uses debt to his, to his advantage, but I mean, the guy is just, he, he's a wealth of knowledge and he understands market cycles and he has totally ridden the market. He was buying stuff in Maryvale at $30,000 back at the bottom. And if people don't know that it's like one of the hot beds right now in Phoenix. Yeah. So, I mean, and the houses are over 200, 250,000 now. Yeah, it, 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 it's crazy. I don't actually know who that is, but uh, it sounds like a Dave Ramsey type guy. Would you compare him similar to Dave Ramsey? Uh, he's, he, he's like, um, he's just an ordinary guy. You know what I love? It's, it's, it's the guys that are ordinary and family guys, but, but have a good head on their shoulders on business. Yep. You know, and I, I, I think sometimes we take advice from, uh, people that have the best um, Instagram and YouTube channels. And sometimes it's the guys that are flying under the radar that really have it together. I would almost say that's more often than not the case, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, when you're, when you're in the spotlight all the time and you're flashy with it, you can say a lot of stuff that maybe isn't true or isn't genuine. Mm-hmm. So there's some great people. I mean, but of course there's, there's success there. And I think there's a reason why people do it, but 
Yeah. Um, but this person, uh, he's been my mentor since I moved to Arizona. And, and I personally, uh, there's a lot of people that have different mentors and I have had a bunch of different mentors and I want to give credit to all my mentors. You know, I, I think, I think they deserve credit with whether it's just a book you read or a course you bought. Um, people, you know, we ride on the shoulders of giants really. And those are our mentors. So. Absolutely. It's a great way to put it right in the shoulders of giants. I like it. Yeah, there's a guy, I'll just share one real quick story is, um, there's, I think now I'm going to mess it up. Um, I think it's Joe, Officer Joe, Louisville, Kentucky. Um, 12 year old kid came to him and talked about uh, some guy stole his bike and he wanted to whoop the kid. Well, this Officer Joe, uh, Joe Martin, I think it was. He, he said, well, why don't you come over to my uh, boxing club? I run the police athletic league and I'll teach you how to box. The kid came over there. And, and Joe whispered in his ear, you're the greatest kid. You're the greatest. You're the best. And for the next four years, he grew and grew and grew. He ended up winning the gold medal. And his name was Cassius Clay, and he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. But no one knows who Joe Martin is. Very few people do. But it was the guy that mentored Muhammad Ali. It's crazy. So, Good little yeah. story. I like that. Yeah. This next, um, next question goes without saying, but how do you like to give back? Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> like, I, I, I think just answering questions, um, not expecting a lot in return I, is usually how it goes. I think the key is if, if you can figure a way to help someone, there's always a way that the reciprocity can come, whether it's financial or whether it's connection. One of the one of the best ways I love I love being a connector to people. I love connecting people and helping them grow their business, putting them in touch with the right person. Well, yeah, because then you become the source for connections, right? And that just helps people out, and you get the reciprocity that happens almost every time. I think that's just the law of the universe. So, um, you know, and not to mention the Go Giver Mastermind was all you to set up, and now we're all connected that way, which is great. Uh, you know, you're obviously a coach for people, so you're helping them. So you get back in a lot of different ways. Everybody really appreciates. I really, really appreciate that. I'm sure. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Brandon, how can the listeners find you? You know, if they want to learn more about you, become part of your tribe, get some coaching from you, JV a deal with you. Where do they find you? At? Um, I will basically one of the easiest ways is Boxer. It's the Walkie Talkie app. And if you go to Brandon, the man 13, send me a text message or send me a voice memo. Guess what? I'll reply. Awesome. Um, that's one of the easiest ways I'm on Facebook, Brandon Simmons. I'm on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, but I, I have a YouTube channel. I'm trying to put out content right now that just helps people and also trains my employees. So anyway, well, you give there. That, that's huge. And we're definitely going to include that in the show notes um, to make sure that all the listeners out there can, uh, can find you, can get in touch with you. And once again, for all the listeners out there, if you get, if you're getting value from this show, please like it, please subscribe to this, to the show and share it because uh, I think Brandon dropped a lot of knowledge today that really is going to go and help a lot of people out there. Brandon, once again, I appreciate you being here today Thank and, you. uh, We'll, we'll be in touch, man. I'd like to have a follow-up call with you maybe in a, in a few months or, or sometime next year, and we'll see what's going on in your business at that point. We, yeah, we got some big stuff going right now. So um, I, I, I pray and hope for the best. Um, I know that it's uh, a great time to be in the business. So I'm very grateful. Yep. Sounds thanks, good, thanks for having me on, Scott. Appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll talk to you real soon. All righty. Thanks, man.